Welcome to the new edition of the ABBA League magazine. In the sixth round, Kirka goes to Levski and Metalats with their sixth and last game in a row away from home, this time in Ljubljana against Olympia. Cibona needed their second win of the season against Solnok, while Igor Kea was trying to take advantage of Partizan's problems. After the derby game of the round in Belgrade, there would be only one team still undefeated as the leading Serena Zvezda and Buducnost lock horns, and of course in the end the five best actions on the round. We start with the news, MTT Skopje reached an agreement with its former player Damian Stojanovski and also with another of the former players, Seat Shekovic, who replaces the sacked Georgian, Georgi Tsintsadze. The Macedonian champion also strengthened their lineup with the American, Dion Dixon. Klemen Prepelic returns to Union Olympia as his story with the Turkish outfit Banvit ends. He will stay in Ljubljana at least till the end of the season. Ani Gokea also has a new member of the squad. It's Petar Torlak, a 23-year-old guard, returns to Europe from East Carolina College and will play under the guidance of his former youth national team coach Vlada Jovanovic. The two had already worked together at the European Youth Championship in 2009. We start our review in Sofia, where Kirka had lost another game in the national championship prior to visiting Levski and was of course trying to make amends. Christo Zaharia was the first one to score in this game, after which Kirka took the lead for the first time through Mirko Mulalic, who was successful for three. Levski was back in front by 11-7 when Pavlin Ivanov scored and drew a foul as well. But then Chris Poker made sure Kirka wouldn't fall behind as he managed to equal the score to 11. Kirka was in front by 20 to 15 when the best scorer of the league, Malcolm Armstead, entered the match and quickly scored three times in a row. But nevertheless, the home team managed to end the first quarter in front as they scored the next six points to make it 21 to 20 after Miljan Pupovic was successful. Kirka then scored the first seven points of the second quarter to make it 27 to 21. The visitors were in front by seven points when Neboj Oksimovic scored twice in a row, but the home team did manage to come within two points till the end of the half when Milan Pupovic made it 36 to 33 for the visitors. Kirka managed to stay in front for the majority of the third period, firstly through Mirko Mulalic, who quickly scored twice from the three-point line. And then they stayed in the lead, even though Levski was close behind. And after 30 minutes, Stoyan Judoski made it 53-51 to with a three. Again, Kirka opened the quarter better than the hosts, as they needed more than three minutes to get going in the last period, and Malcolm Armstead scored to make it 57-51. to Then the best action of the match, as Dimitar Dimitrov finished with an alley-oop to put Levski just two points behind. Two minutes before time, Levski was able to take the lead of 63-62 to through Dimitrov, and a bit later, Hristo Zaharijo made it 65-62 to for the hosts. That was just a minute and a half before time. But Mirko Mulalic was precise that night as he managed to score for three in the next offense and that was the fourth time in as many attempts to equal the score to 65. 18 seconds to go, Chris Booker scored for Kirka and the guests retook the lead and in the other end, Levski couldn't score new points as Pupovic lost the ball. That was just four seconds before the end of the match. After that, a quick foul from the home team, but Nebojša Oksimovic was successful both times from, from the free throw line and a game was decided. A fifth win of the season for Kirka, while Levski remains at one. After the heavy defeat in Sremska Mitrovica, Union Olympia was trying to make it right against the last place team of the league, Metalac from Valjevo. Risto Nicolo was the first one to score for the home team. And for the visitors, at the other end, it was Marko Ljubicic. 
After a more or less equal start, the home players succeeded in scoring four consecutive three-pointers, three of which contributed by Sasu Salin, and the home team took the lead of 19 to 12. Immediately after getting his first playing minutes for his new club, Clement Pripolic scored his first three and set the result of the first period, which ended with Olympia in front by 26 to 16. It was the same player who was the first one to score in the second period, and soon after that, Gregor Hravat became the fourth player in Olympia's ranks to score for three, and the lead grew to 16 points already. Still, the visitors managed to not lose sight of their hosts as Petar Rakicevic made it 43 to 30. It was 46 to 32 after the first 20 minutes. Metalats opened the third period much better and after George Maistorovic scored his first three, he closed the gap to 10. But Mirza Begic was the master under the basket as he jumped well in offense and dunked to make it 54 to 43. Then Majstorovic was at it again, scoring the next four points to put Metalats less than ten points behind for the first time since the beginning of the match. It was 61-52 to 52 after 30 minutes of play. Then both teams opened the last period poorly, since they both needed more than three minutes to get going, but it was the visitors with an early initiative as they scored eight successive points to cut the deficit to a mere point after Nemanja Todorovic scored. The home team needed four and a half minutes to score their first points in the last quarter when Mirza Begic made it 63-60. to 60. Three and a half minutes before time, Dusan Kutlesic scored his first three-pointer of the night and the guests were in front for the first time after scoring the, the first points of the game. 31 seconds before the end of the match, the home team was back in front by a single point, but that was followed by another good offensive rebound by the visitors as Nikola Jevtovic made it 70-69 to 69 for Metalats. This is the action. After that, Olympia couldn't score anymore and Metalat sensationally won the game in Ljubljana, inflicting a third Olympia's defeat of the season while securing a first win of the season for themselves. Look at this. How much pleasure it brought the team from Valevo in this game. Olympia missed as many as 19 free throws. The defending champion hosted Hungarian Solok in the Dražen Petrovic Arena. It was an important game for the visitors who had previously lost a narrow game in the Eurocup against Union Olympia. Drill Blessing Lane was the first one to score for Tsibona. And for the Hungarians, it was their national team player, David Vojvoda. It was the home team who opened the game better as they grabbed their first double-digit lead as early as in the middle of the first quarter when Marin Rozic made it 16-6. to Filip Kruslin was the last one to score in the first period, which ended with Cibona in front by 29-22. to At the start of the second period, the American Lazarek Jones scored nine points in a row for Solnok to close the gap to just two points. And then in the 18th minute, they were able to get in front for the first time in the match when Peter Laurent made it 40 to 39. They were also in the lead come the end of the half, which ended with 50, uh, 45 to 43. Quickly in the third period, Solnok took the lead of seven points when Marko Burkic rounded up a 10 to 0 run for the visitors. It was a warning sign for Tsibona, who responded well through Ivan Siriščević to give the lead back to the home team. And a bit later, when Damir Markota scored for three, Tsibona was back in front by seven points. Still, both teams finished the third quarter on 64 points after Christian Wittmann scored for three at the other end. Sibona opened the last period well with Damir Markota scoring twice in a row to open up a five-point lead for Sibona. They were in front by eight points when Blessing Game scored for three in the 36th minute, but the Hungarians wouldn't just roll over as they scored twice for three and closed the gap to just a point when Lazarek Jones was successful from the line.
But Jarrell Blessingham was the real hero of the match, eventually scoring 26 points and was calm at the free throw line when it mattered most as he scored all four. The last act of the game was David Vojvoda losing the ball and Ivan Siriščević scoring at the other end to set the final result of 96-92 for Cibona, who manages to win for only the second time this season. Three thousand people turned up in Skopje to see their team fight it out with Cedevita, for whom Rokolini Ukic was able to return. The Macedonians were able to rely on their two newest acquisitions, Serd Cechovic and Dion Dixon, but they only managed five points between them in this match. Marko Simonovski was the first one to score. Eventually, he was the only one in the home ranks to reach more than ten points. First points for the visitors were contributed by Fran Pilepic, and the first lead by Nemanja Gordic, who made it 10 to 8. At the end of the first quarter, Kirill Nikolovsky was hot as he scored seven points in a row and contributed well to a 11 to 2 run for MZT, who eventually won the first period by 19 to 14. Then Cedevita opened the second quarter really well, scoring the first 11 points to take the lead of 25 to 19 with Luka Babic rounding up that run. It took almost four minutes for the home team to score when finally Ivan Marinkovic breaking the deadlock. It was a start of better things for MZT who eventually retook the lead after a 9 to 2 partial. Still, Cedevita finished the half in the lead, albeit a minimal one. And a good start to the second half by MZT, who was quickly in front by 41 to 35 after Nena Djivkovic scored for three, but the visitors soon responded with eight consecutive points and after Miro Bilan scored, they were in front by 43 to 41. Alexander Cvetkovic was the last to score in the third period as he closed the gap back to four points. Cedevita was quick to equal their highest lead in the game of eight points when Marko Arapovic was successful. And soon after that, a first double-digit lead for the visitors when Miro Bilan scored twice in a row to make it 61 to 50. When Ante Delas scored in the 36th minute, the lead had grown to 14 points. MZT was behind by 10 when Owen Klassen scored, but that wasn't enough for the home team to win in front of their fans as Tedevita routinely finished up the game, eventually winning by 76 to 61. So a first defeat for MZT's new coach Verbica Stefano as his players only managed to score three times for three from as many as 18 attempts. A true basketball holiday in Laktashi as 3,000 people turned up as Partizan visited Ego Kea, who was still without their head coach Vlada Jovanovic but reinforced with Petar Torlak. Andrija Milutinovic was the first one to score for Partizan and for the home team, it was the captain, Branko Jorovic, for three. Edo Muric was again Partizan's best scorer of the night with 18 points. Here he is with his first three to put Partizan in front by nine to three. 17 apiece after the first 10 minutes after Mladen Jeremic scored last in the first period. Then Petar Torlak scored his first points for his new club to give Igor Kea the lead of 22 to 19. In this period, Partizan was only able to score twice from open play, one of which was for three, contributed by Mikhailo Andrić. Igor Kea was already nine points to the good when Nikola Dragovic scored twice in a row. And the first half ended with the home team in front by seven. It was 39 to 32. The third period started with a partisan offensive in which they scored 10 consecutive points to take the lead of 40 to 39. 
A bit later, it was Igor Kea with a run of their own as they managed to score nine points in a row to make it 50 to 44. The home team was also in front come the end of the quarter, which uh, in the last two baskets were contributed by Dusko Bunic to make it 63 to 55 before the last 10 minutes of the game. When Jorge Gagic scored five successive points at the start of the last period, Partizan was behind by four points. But that was followed by a similar run from Igor Kea's newest player, Peter Torlak, who made sure the home team was in front by nine points in the 36th minute. A minute later, Luka Bogdanovic scored for three to put Partizan just four points behind, but then Peter Torlak took matters into his own hands and proved to be a much-needed reinforcement for Igor Kea. First, he scored a all-important three. And in the last minute, then he made four out of six free throws and made sure the win stayed at home. It ended with 83-77 for Igor Kea. Four thousand five hundred people turned up in the Pioneer Hall to witness the duel of the last two unbeaten teams in the league, Cervena Zvezda and Butuchnost. Luka Mitrovic opened the scoring for Cervena Zvezda. And for the visitors, it was Darko Planinic. Cervena Zvezda was in front by 12 to 11 when Jakub Blažić entered the game and quickly scored two successive three-pointers. But then Buducnos responded really well, scoring three times in a row as Vladimir Dašić made it 17 to 12 for the visitors. They were still in front at the end of the first period, which ended with 17 to 14. Buducnos held a slight lead throughout the second period in which J.R. Reynolds scored three times for three, one of which under a foul as he secured a first double-digit lead for the guests when it was 38-26. to Then Zvezda scored the next six points to reduce the deficit a bit. Marcus Williams scored at the buzzer to set the result of the first half, which ended with Buducnost in front by 40-34. to Reynolds was having a good game, eventually finishing it on, on 18 points. He made sure Buducnost was again in front by 11. But Blažić was also having a good evening, also finishing on 18 points, and it was him who secured that Cervena Zvezda was again in front, albeit by a minimal margin. But that was then followed by another good run from the visitors, rounded up by Suat Shekovic with a three. It was Marcus Williams again who closed the quarter with new points. This time he made it 59-54, to 54, still for Buducnos. But then, in the last quarter, a total offensive by the home team as the visitors' game was plagued with turnovers while Cervena Zvezda was scoring easy baskets at the other end. When Nikola Kalinic scored, he rounded up a 17-0 partial for the home team as Buducnos needed almost five minutes to score for the first time in the last period. Darko Planinic then finally broke the deadlock, but that wasn't enough to stop Cervena Zvezda from charging. When Nemanja Dangovic scored two of his 11 points altogether, they were already 15 points to the good, and the door had finally closed for Buducnost to spring a surprise. It ended with 83-69, as Cervena Zvezda won the last period by as much as 29-10, as they now remain the only unbeaten team of the league. Mega Vizura had three wins to their name and Zadar had two before the teams met in Srimska Mitrovica for that final clash of the sixth round. James Florence was the first one to score in this match. And for the home team, it was Alexander Marelia who was eventually to be the best scorer of the match. Okay. 
Zadar's captain Ive Ivano was hot at the start of the game as he scored four times in the first period, putting Zadar in the lead of 14 to 5. He eventually finished the game on 18 points, but the home team responded well as Nikola Jokic rounded up a run which put Mega in the lead of 17 to 16. Still, Zadar was able to win the first period by 20 to 17 as Domagoj Bosniak scored. In the second quarter, a nice action from Alexander Marelia to put Mega four points behind, but Zadar was quick to open up a seven-point lead courtesy of Florence's three. Again, Mega managed to respond in time, this time through Ognen Yaramas as he made it 37 to 36. It was the same player who set the result after the first 20 minutes. It was 47 to 42 for Mega Vizura. Mega was in front by 10 points for the first time in the game when Rade Zagora scored from a counter attack. A bit later, Marco Keschel put the host 14 points to the good after an 8 to 0 partial. The home team was soon 15 points in front as Nikola Jokic scored. He was again brilliant as he finished the game on 17 points, 12 rebounds and 8 assists. Then Filip Kralevic managed to close the gap to 13 at the end of the third quarter. Mega was in front by 72 to 60. When Marco Keschel scored his second three-pointer, his team was already 18 points to the good, after which James Florence managed to close the gap back to 12. Then the visitors even managed to cut the deficit to mere five points when Domagoj Bosniak scored twice in a row for three. Three and a half minutes before time, James Florence scored to put Zadar just three points behind. That was after a 17-2 partial for the visitors. And that run got interrupted by the game's best scorer, Alexander Marela, who finished the game on 20 points. He managed to score twice in a row to put Mega seven points in front. 57 seconds before the end, it was all over for Zadar as Rade Zagora scored an all-important three to make it 89 to 79. It ended with 91 to 84 for the home team, which is their fourth win of the season, while the Dalmatians remain at two. So, a narrow but important win for Kirka over Levski, while the main news of the round must be Metalac's first win of the season at Olympia's expense. No problems for Cedevita in Skopje, while Cibona manages to win for the second time this season. Partizan is still in crisis as they fall victim to Igor Kea. No such worries for their city rivals, Cervena Zvezda, who now stand alone at the top of the league. The only remaining unbeaten team of the championship, a win less. For the second place, Budučnost in Krkac, the Vida is now fourth as Union Olympia tumbles down the order with that surprise defeat against Metalac, after which there are no more teams without a win. We still find Partizan and Cibona at the foot of the table. The most valuable player of the sixth round is, again, Nikola Jokic. It's his second time this year. After he was the MVP of the first round, this time he managed a playing index of 40. He scored 17 points and had 12 rebounds and 8 assists and also 2 steals in the 35 minutes he played in the game against Zadar, which secured a fourth win for Mega this season. And now let's take a look at the best 5 actions of this sixth round. We start at number 5, where we find this dunk from Alexis van Mene from Kirka. He was, he was assisted by Malcolm Armstead. At number 4, we have this alley-oop from Levski, finished by Dimitar Dimitro. And we have another Bulgarian, this time at number three. It is Christo Nicolo from Union Olympia. He first stole the ball and then dunked heavily at the counter-attack. At number two, we have the American James Florence with this drive through the basket. And it was very genuine from the second best scorer in the league. 
And at number one, it is Nikola Kalinic, a very nice action from the whole team, finished by an alley-oop by Nikola Kalinic, assisted by Jaka Blažić. Now let's take a look at the pairings. The seventh round starts on Saturday at 7 p.m. with a game in Zadar, where the home team will try to beat a wounded Olympia. The round closes on Monday, when Solnok will play the top team of the league at home in Hungary. And that's all from us today. Join us again next time. But until then, it's bye-bye from us.